But it seems to me that you came out with like open heart, share as much as possible, and you found success in the process. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it wasn't something I, I, I didn't know that this was going to happen this way, right? It, I kind of fell into it. And I'm so grateful that I did because the way I did allowed me to want to share it with others too, to open their eyes, to open your eyes and yours to this. And my story kind of goes back to 2008, the Great Recession. I was on my way to becoming an architect and I was I was well on my way to, to do that. Um, I took several tests. I was getting promoted and, and, and I had just gotten a raise and I had just gotten engaged and all these amazing things were happening in my life. And then the recession happened and I got the uh, sort of rug pulled out under me and I kind of lost everything. I lost my job. I got let go. And I remember that because like every second of that, I, I remember because it was so... It was like getting the wind knocked out of you. Uh, and, and it hurt a lot because I had dedicated my life to the world of architecture and doing everything I could. And even though I followed the path that I was told to be on, that my parents told me to be on, that schools told me to be on, et cetera, to live this successful, uh, stable life and have a stable career, I still got let go. And I was very upset as well. And I'm very grateful because it was around this time that podcasts were starting to become a thing. And I was very early on to listening to them because I had all this time. And I uh, stumbled across a podcast called Internet Business Mastery, and it was one particular episode. Sometimes that's all it takes. One story can change your life. And it was a story about a guy named Cornelius Fitchner who was helping people pass what was called the project management exam or the PM exam, a very technical exam for project managers. And I didn't know anything about it, but he was telling the story about how he created um, a resource online, a website to help people find the information that they needed to study to download some other additional resources and eventually pay for products that he was selling like study guides and they were all digital. So it was all kind of automatically working for him. And it was also around this time that Tim Ferriss wrote the book Four Hour Work Week. So it was kind of like all these things combined that made me go, well, could I do that? And what have I got to lose? The barrier to entry to do something like this is very low and I had time. So what I did was I built a website called inthelead.com, L-E-E-D, which is a acronym for the exam that I was helping people pass. And very shortly, I started to notice that I was getting some traffic. And this traffic, traffic was coming from Google. It was coming from different forums where people were finding my information and then sharing it with other people because I was one of the only ones who was openly talking about how to study for and pass this exam. Everybody else was putting all this information inside study guides to pass, which were costing hundreds of dollars. And so it was kind of blowing people's minds that just by openly sharing my own experience passing this exam was helping people. And eventually people said, Pat, you need to put this stuff into like a resource or a guide. And so, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, but I wrote a Word document that was about 60 pages in length and I printed it as a PDF file and just sold it with a PayPal sort of button. And in that first month in October of 2008, I had generated from a $19.99 study guide, uh, $7,908.55. That's after like fees were taken by PayPal. And it, and it just blew me away. You know, and initially I was very excited about it, but then all these feelings started to come, come about like, well, this doesn't even feel real. This doesn't feel right. I didn't go to school for this. I went to school for that. And I thought that something was gonna come crashing down. And I remember the next month, the income continued to grow because more people started to find the guide. And I started to realize that the more that I poured into serving this community of architects and designers, the more it would just continually come back my way. And this is where I first learned this principle of your earnings are a byproduct of how well you serve your audience. And it just continued to prove itself. Every time I poured more into this space, I kept getting more back. And it wasn't even, it, it never felt like selling to me because it was always coming back with thanks. And it was always with the understanding that it was either don't get my guide and struggle and waste money on this exam or pay a little bit to get access to this information or even get the free information and help your way through this material and save time, save money. And it got to a point, and I talk about this in my book, Superfans, that People who took the exam ended up sharing my website and getting and convincing their entire office to buy my study guide for me. So this one woman who I remember helping, her name was Jackie. She passed the exam. She was so thrilled about doing it. And without me even knowing, she shared the resource with all 25 of her other coworkers and convinced them to all buy the exam guide as well. She could have just shared it for free with them, but she wanted me to get something back in return for what I gave her. And eventually that one person I discovered turned into 25 sales. So if I can help just an individual, I can really help a lot more people on top of that because that sharing will naturally happen when you create something amazing. So at the end of 2008, more and more people started discovering that I was creating this resource and I was making two and a half, three times, four times, five times more money than I was making as an architect. 
um, which again, just was still trippy. I was still, in fact, the interesting thing, you'd mentioned the fear. I did not know how long this was gonna last. I didn't think it was real. So I was actually, despite making five times more than I was making as an architect, I was looking for more architecture jobs because I was just so, that was what I thought I was supposed to do. And the analogy I often use is, I was basically straddling two ladders. I had my corporate ladder that I was climbing and I kind of got thrown off a little bit, but I still had my foot on it. And then here, the, here was this new entrepreneurial ladder and the sky was the limit and I was climbing it, but I could only climb so much as my foot on the other ladder would let me go. And so eventually I had to make the choice to fully dedicate myself to that new ladder and fully let go of the other. And that only happened in May of 2009, in fact. Uh, so it took a while for me to understand that this might actually be a new path for me. I was still going in for interviews. Luckily, nobody was hiring me at the time. And I'm truly grateful about that because who, who knows? Again, I was just so conditioned to believe that this was who I was supposed to be. And it was so hard for me to believe that I could do this. But it was at the end of 2009 that I, or 2008 that I created smartpassiveincome.com to share with other people in the very same manner. Let me just share everything that I'm learning and, and everything that's working, the good, the bad, the ugly, what I wish I had done differently. And I think one thing that I decided to do very early on that a lot of people really loved was I was just sharing exactly how much money I was making and where it was coming from, these income reports. And nobody in the space was really doing that. But to me, it was just so obvious to do that. If I was gonna teach this stuff and people were going to, choose to spend time with me. I wasn't even selling anything uh, on the website, but I knew that people were taking time to read this. I treated it like how we invest our money in stocks and companies that we support, right? They share quarterly reports of how their business is doing. So I, as an investor with my money can understand if it's worth continuing or not. And I can understand the health of the company. So I figured, well, I should do the same thing. I should give my audience an update on the health of me and my company and what's going on so that you can make an informed decision as to whether or not I fit your style and you, believe what I'm saying and you want to do something similar. Uh, and then really what put the cap on this, and I apologize, I had a little bit of coffee right before this to stay up later because I am in San Diego, California. But um, the biggest thing out of all this, both on the lead exam stuff and especially with smart passive income is I started to get thank you notes from people. I started to get actual thank you notes, handwritten notes from people saying, Pat, you've changed my life. You've introduced me to this new thing that I didn't know existed. I didn't think I can do it until you led the way. And that really taught me about the human to human connection with all of this. Like that is such a key component. The empathy that you have for the people who you are serving is by far the most important thing because when you have that empathy and understanding of what they're going through and what they're thinking and, and what their struggles are and what their goals are, you can help come to them at their, at their level and help them along the way. And the analogy I like to use is I'm like, we're all going through this forest of entrepreneurship together. And because I have a little bit, a bit uh, of experience in it, I'm the guy at the front of the pack with the machete. And let me take the hits for you. Let me get through the thorns and the bushes. Let me see if there's any dangerous animals ahead. I'll carve a path for everybody else behind me. But I'm not like, I'm bringing everybody with me. I'm not at the top of a mountain shouting down. We're all, we're all in this together and we're figuring it out as a group.